Welcome everyone. It's really nice to see you tonight. I'm Paul Lynch. I started my practice in 2007. Arizona Pains has been around the corner since 2008. Um, I know many of you guys um, have been to that clinic and some have gone to other clinics in town. And so um, we've helped a lot of people over the last 15 years. That makes me really happy to do that. Tonight, I'm gonna to talk to you about a new research study that we're a part of. And I'll just let you know, if you don't qualify for the research study, I'm still gonna tell you about the technology um, and normal insurance would cover this procedure as well. Like Medicare covers the procedure that I'm gonna talk about tonight. But I'm gonna to talk to you about this research study because it's really exciting. Um, there's a company called Nalu and they have a, a, a device that's already FDA approved, it's already on the market, it's already covered by most insurances, but now they're doing what's called a post-market study to show that it works for very specific disease states, and we're part of that uh, study, and so we're enrolling patients. I've got Jose in the back, if you guys wanna wave at him. He's the guy that made you sign in with the black scrubs. He's our uh, research director, and so at the end of tonight, if what I'm talking about is something interesting to you, go tell Jose that you'd like an office visit specifically to talk about it. Tonight I'm gonna to talk in general, but I'm probably not gonna be able to talk to each of you about your own condition that just won't work. I mean, we only have the library for so long. But if you think it, that you're a good candidate, you can tell Jose and he'll put a little asterisk by your name and we'll call you and we'll give you an office visit just to talk about this study, okay? So that's a little bit of background about me. I wanna give you a little bit more background, uh, next slide, about peripheral nerve stimulation um, in general. Um, this is a procedure that I'm really passionate about and it's not a new procedure, which is really interesting. I learned how to do this in 2006 and 2007. I know I look super young, but in 2006 and seven, I trained um, at one of the best pain management programs in the country, it was called Texas Tech. And my mentor was named Gabor Rax. He's very famous in the pain management space. And on my last day of fellowship, we spent the entire day in the operating room. And I remember that day we did three or four cases just like this, peripheral nerve stimulation. But way back then the technology was much, much different. And so it was more difficult. It was harder to access the nerves. The IPG that we're gonna talk about a little bit was a lot bigger, so it was less comfortable for patients. But it was something that when I left in 2007, I was very excited about. And when I came to Mayo, um, right off the bat, I got the opportunity to help a couple of patients with this. And I just wanted to tell you one of those stories that probably hooked me on this technology and that I would continue to do this throughout my career. I had a patient at Mayo Clinic that came down and specifically went to the hand surgery department and asked for an amputation. And he asked for an amputation because his hand got caught inside of an engine in his truck and it mangled his hand and he had 26 surgeries over the previous years before he saw me and he went, or before he saw the, the surgeons. And he said, I'm, I'm tired of fooling with it. I have 10 out of 10 pain all the time in my hand and I just want an amputation. And they were considering it. Now the data is not very good on amputations. The data actually shows when you amputate, a lot of times your pain gets worse and you can get phantom pain. So they said, we're willing to consider this, but we want you to go to the pain clinic first. So he saw one of my colleagues and they said, there's nothing else we can do. As a matter of fact, this patient had injections and medications and even had a spinal cord stimulator placed in the neck to block pain in the neck or in the hand. And they told him, well, there's nothing else that we know what to do, but we have this crazy young kid here that just trained at Texas Tech and he's been talking to us about peripheral nerve stimulation. And we don't know if you're a good candidate, but we're gonna send you to see him. So he came back the next week. I'd only been in town about two weeks. And I saw this really, really complicated case. And I sat with a gentleman and said, you already have a spinal cord stimulator in, but my mentor said that sometimes peripheral nerve stimulation works better. And we can try this and there's no guarantees. Long story short, we went in the operating room and we placed electrodes under his clavicle. And we placed them around the nerves that go to the arm. And he got like 80% pain relief. And we placed that device at Mayo Clinic. 15 years later, he's still my patient. We've kept his hand, he's still doing well. And that got me really excited about this technology. Like, are there other patients that we can help with this? I started working with podiatrists about that same time, 2007 and eight. And we would go into the OR, I call it in-stage foot disease. Um, I made that up, it's not a real thing, but um, kind of like in-stage you know, kidney disease. But there would be um, these patients that had feet that hurt all the time and the podiatrist had operated two times or three times or five times or more sometimes and their feet would change colors and they'd have what we call neuropathic pain. And we realized that there were certain nerves that we could stimulate in the feet um, with electrodes and then um, and take away the pain. But here was the problem. The IPGs or the batteries were so big, we didn't know where to put them. And it was a really a challenge. And we, there was one podiatrist in town that was very smart and we found that we could open the leg. And this sounds scary, it's not what I'm gonna talk about tonight. 
and there was a natural fold between the two muscles, the gastroc and the soleus, and we could place this IPG between that. And so we had some patients we were able to get con control of their pain, but it was difficult. It wasn't super common, right? I was one of the few people in the country doing it at that time. What I'm gonna talk about tonight is vastly different. The company came out with an IPG, and I'll show it to you in a second, that's about the size of your fingernail. And so now we can place electrodes on nerves throughout the body and not, and not be worried about where to put this battery. As a matter of fact, the battery doesn't even go inside of you. They figured out they can keep the battery external and all you'd have to do is place these electrodes on the nerves. And I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a little, but I, get, I was excited about this technology 15 years ago and today I'm even more excited. So next slide. So chronic pain, you guys know about chronic pain, but specifically peripheral nerve stimulation, we're looking for nerve-based pain, okay? And so, for example, the foot story that I told you, someone who's had foot surgeries and they still hurt, the guy that had the mangled hand, that's nerve-type pain. That's what we're trying to treat with this. We've even found with the knee, um, I don't, have you guys ever heard the word genicular nerves or genicular nerve blocks? We found that the genicular nerves go to the knee and if the patient has a neuropathic type pain or nerve-based pain of their knee where it swells up and changes colors, we can stimulate those nerves. So we're really looking for patients not just to have chronic pain, but have chronic nerve-based pain. Um, next slide. So what is peripheral nerve stimulation? I'm just gonna read this to you. A PNS device or peripheral nerve stimulation device uses mild electrical impulses to block pain signals from affected nerves before they get to your brain. And we have an example here of how it works and we use the example of like a phone line. In the old days, um, you'd be on the phone and if I would call home and my mom was on the phone, she always on the phone, it would just go uh, 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 and I couldn't get through. And so the way we think about it is when we do this soft, gentle electrical stimulation of the nerve, now um, the phone line, if you will, is being used by that soft, mild um, signal. And when pain tries to fire, it can't because the line's already being used. Does that kind of make sense? That's pretty simplistic, but it's a good way to describe it. Uh, next slide. What are the benefits of PNS? Um, this system with NALU is minimally invasive. So instead of a large IPG, it's very small. And I'm gonna show it to you guys in a second. It's reversible. It's a drug-free pain management approach. It can be combined with other therapies. For example, the gentleman I told you about, he had a spinal cord stimulator in and we placed a PNS device as well. And the two of them working together worked better um, than either of them alone. Um, you can control the program and intensity from your smartphone, which is really cool. And um, it's also very small, so it's meant to be discreet. Next slide. What is the NALU system? So we're currently enrolling right now patients for an FDA cleared device. It's already been approved and it's already uh, paid for by insurance. So for example, um, if you're interested in being in the study but you don't qualify, you still might be a candidate for the device, okay? And so it's already covered by most major insurances, including Medicare. The NALU micro IPG, we call that because it's so small, I'm gonna show it to you in a minute, um, is very discreet and it also has the longest FDA clearance on the market, 18 years. From the time we put it in, it's, it's a, approved for 18 years. Now at the end of the 18 years, it doesn't just blow up or whatever, it's just that's the FDA that they say it definitely is gonna last that long. We can take it out anytime along the way or replace it at 18 years if you still have it. Uh, next slide. So how does it work? This is what it looks like. I'm actually gonna show it to you guys um, because it's kind of uh, remarkable. So this is the part that goes under the skin. This part is implanted. So there's a very small electrode that goes next to the nerves that hurt, and then this part goes under the skin. And it's so small, I'll pass it around so you guys can look at it, that most patients that did a study on it aren't even aware it's inside their body. Um, anyone in the room have a pacemaker or know anyone that has a pacemaker? So those are pretty big, like they usually go right here and you can feel them. And most patients will say, oh, I can feel it at all times, I know it's there. But this, when they ask people, they can't really tell that it's there. So I'll actually pass it around and you guys can kind of look at that. This is called a therapy disc and it goes external. So what they found is you can just stimulate these nerves for a couple hours a day and that's enough to kind of stun it and reduce the pain and then you can take it off. So for example, if you were using it for arm pain or hand pain, we could place electrodes and then put it here and you could wear it under your clothing maybe a couple hours in the morning and then take it off. And so you never have a battery implanted inside of you, which as I've talked to some of my patients, they don't like the idea of a battery inside of them. So the battery stays external and you get two of these. And so you can always be charging one and the other one you can have on your person. And I'll pass this one around as well. There you go. So 
Uh, next slide. Oh, no, stay there for a second. The cool thing is that it connects with your smartphone. And so you can just pull out your smartphone and turn it on or off and you can change programs. What's really cool is we found that not every pane responds exactly the same. And so we, here, I'll take it from you so you don't have to get up. Yeah, thank you. So um, you can go through different programs and your pane might respond better to one program and someone else a different program. And so they'll go through a couple of different ones. These are the four diagnoses that we're enrolling for the study. I just want to be really clear, even if you don't have one of these diagnoses, you still could qualify for the procedure, but these are the four that would be for the study. So people that have shoulder pain, it's called the suprascapular nerve. People who have low back pain or stimulate what's called the cluneal nerves, which run over the bone right here. If you just grab your back and it hurts here, there's nerves called the cluneal nerves, and so we can stimulate there. Knee pain, we stimulate the genicular nerves, and for the foot and ankle, there's a couple different varieties depending on where your pain is. Next slide. Um, I already went through these, but these are some of the common places where you put the therapy disc. So the blue would be for upper arm pain, it would go here. For the leg, you can really put it in all sorts of places. Most people like it on the outside of their leg where they can just kind of reach down. Once again, it's the, the small little device going around, that goes under the skin, is there all the time. But anytime you want to turn it on, you place, it has sticky pad on it, and you put it over it and, it, and your smartphone turns it on. It's really, really high tech cutting edge stuff. And then the foot, we usually put it kind of on the side of the leg. Next slide. And then the cool thing is you get to test drive it um, two different ways. We actually want you to walk around for a week with a therapy disc on just to see if you like it. If it really bugs you and you don't like it, then you wouldn't go forward. No procedure at all. We'll do that just to see if you like the therapy disc. Then you do the trial. You go around for about a week with the electrodes next to the nerve. If you don't like it, we take it out. But if you go through the trialing the therapy disc and trialing the electrodes and it works, then we do the permanent implant. Um, next slide. So this is that, we'll go through this. This is the wear experience. You take a week and make sure just the therapy disc feels okay on your body. Next slide. Just to be clear, you, no, no incisions or needles or OR, you just literally take off the back and it sticks to your, to your chest and you see, see if that's okay with you. Um, then we do the therapy trial. You actually go to our procedure suite and we place the electrodes with either x-ray guidance or ultrasound guidance next to the nerves that are causing pain. And then finally, we do the final implant. The next slide which is a permanent implant. You have to go to a surgery center for this part, and we do make an incision, a very small, it's, it blows me away. Like in the old days, we do these big surgeries. Now we make an incision just with just, just the tip of the scalpel about that big to place the IPG under it. Did you guys look at that going around, how small it is? It's really kind of incredible. Um, next slide. So follow up. Um, we will work with your physician. So we have all the physicians at Arizona Pain right now are doing this, not just me. Um, I started the group, and so just so you guys know, I'm seeing patients less and less. I will try to see if I can, but all four of our doctors are enrolled, all four of our surgeons are enrolled in this study, and they're all very, very good, okay? Um, so we will work with a physician and Nalu Rep to optimize your pain relief, and then um, we'll see uh, if it works for you to move forward. Next slide. So about the comfort trial, once again, I've said this a bunch of times, um, you don't have to be in the study to do this, but the cool thing about stu the study is there's no cost to you, so that's kind of cool. Um, the study, uh, it, once again, it's already been FDA approved, it's already paid for by most insurances. Um, you may not get in the treatment group, so there is a randomization pro process, but there's a crossover design, and I can't remember, is it, is it three months? Thank you. So at three months, if you, let's say, so we'll randomize you, half the group gets the treatment and half continues just to do what we're normally doing. We call that conventional medical management. And at the end of three months, if you're not happy with conventional medical management, you can always cross over and then try the device, but they wanna compare you for three months head to head. Does that kind of make sense? And so um, it's voluntary, of course, to the only people that wanna be in it. We're gonna track it for 12 to 15 months and we'd ask you to come in up to 15 times during that period of time. But the cool thing is they'll pay you uh, to participate. So every time you come in, they pay you for your time. We're not paying you a lot of money. You're not gonna get rich on it, but they want to say, hey, if you're gonna come back um, for the visit, they're gonna pay you for your time. So that's kind of cool. And then to be clear, you don't have to pay for any of that treatment during that time. You still have to pay for office visits if there's other pain, but anything related to this trial, you don't have to pay for. Uh, next slide. Are you eligible to, able to participate? Um, we want people that have chronic pain in the back, knee, foot, or shoulder. We want people that are 18 to 80 years old. I don't see any 17 year olds in here tonight um, that have not previously failed. And that's not completely true. We don't want, if you failed SCS in the past, this just changed a little bit, you can still be in the study. 
But if you have an active stimulator in right now that's working, then you can't be in the study. And so um, we can kind of talk through that nuance, but you could still have the treatment uh, through insurance. And then we don't want any pregnant ladies, if there's any pregnant ladies in the room, um, or nursing, and then the ability to read and write in English. Uh, next slide. So um, you guys know our phone number and you know our website. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take questions for 10 or 15 minutes. It sounds like there's a lot of good questions already. And then if you would think you might be a candidate or would just like to talk about PNS more, what we'll do when you check out, I want you to tell Jose and we'll put an asterisk next to your name that when you signed in and we'll do a whole office visit just to talk about it. So you'll have time to really get into your case. We can look at your records, see if you're a good candidate.